<laughs> um, but nah, we got Oz in the building. And uh, I just want to say I appreciate you bringing me through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We've done a lot of things together. I ain't lying, my nigga. Everything we do is always fire. Facts. And uh, we just really going to get right into this. Is this your first ever interview? It's my second. Okay. My second ever interview, actually, yeah. Okay. I had one before when I was up up in New, uh, New York, somewhere around there, like maybe Harlem or somebody, somebody interviewed me in a game. But it's my first one that I fuck with. Yeah. Say that. Yeah, like on some like plan, not like on exactly. the fly type shit. Exactly. Got you. Got you. Mm -hmm. All right. So since since that's the case, I think we should start in the beginning yeah. and just work our way up to where we at now. Yes, sir. Um, because like you was just touching on on your Instagram video, like people see the now, yeah, but they don't never see the hard work people been putting in, and and it's a lot more hard work than sometimes people think. A hundred percent. Right. Yes. Hundred so, percent. So let's just start with. Let's just start with what, what what was your first favorite song growing up? What was your first like like when you were like me growing up? I seen Bow Wow, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I was like, damn, Bow Wow be killing oh, shit, like <laughs> real yeah, talk. Yeah. I'm say I'm gonna have to touch on that. So I'm say probably Bow Wow too. Of course, everybody wanted to be Bow. I had a little brave shit. shit. But the song that really had me fucking wanting to do the music shit was ironically it was either I think Fireman by Lil Wayne. That song was hard. That song that dropped, nigga. You couldn't tell me I wasn't Lil Wayne. And the video, yeah. I remember the video with the little fire and Ed Hardy Hell shirts. Yeah. That's the first time I really was like, I want to do that shit, bro. That shit crazy. Yeah. Hell yeah. So when you, what would you say like was your first experience you remember where you was rapping in front of people? Not, not even saying like your first song, just your first time where you found yourself like. Testing the waters, but not like in your bedroom, like in right, front right, of people. In front of actual people? Yeah. Uh, I had to say, when I was young, we was in uh, school uptown. I was probably like third grade, and I was writing these raps. I don't remember the whole thing. It wasn't cool, but everybody was fucking when I rapped that shit in gym class or some shit to the homies. And niggas like, yo, can you write me a rap? Can you write me a rap? So that's probably the first time. Once I got that little taste of, I guess, success in there, I'm like, yeah, I fuck with this, bro. Yeah. I remember I was in, it's funny, I remember I was in third grade and this kid named Julian made a song about his name and that shit was just so hard. I was like, hold up, I gotta catch up, man. I should have my name too, actually. Real I <laughs> gotta be proud of who you are, man. For real, bro, for real. So, like, how did that transition into you saying, you know what, I'm just going third grade, I'm playing around to you getting in a studio, yeah. to making songs? Right. To new way, to all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. But before we get to, I'm just saying, how did you get? Transition from there to there. Yeah. Well, I said this, my I got two big brothers, and they always did the rap shit. They always was in the studio, but I was always the baby. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, as the baby, you got hella shit you can't do because you're too young and shit. Like I can't hoop with these niggas. I'm too young, all that type of shit. But one time we went to the studio together, and it might have been like I started in third grade writing, but in like my fifth grade was in the studio, and um, they listening to beats and shit, and we was there. I was writing, I just snuck my way in there. Start writing them low, and the first rap I rapped on was a Millie by Lil Wayne. Oh, that's a hard rap. beat. And they was like, "Nigga, you got the hardest verse. You like 12. I'm like, "Yeah." So that's how I got into the actual studio. So you wrote this on your phone or on paper? I wrote it on paper. I didn't even have a phone back then. This was back in the day, back type in the day. shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> y'all wrote that shit on paper loosely. That's what's up, man. That was your first time hearing yourself. Yeah. I fell in love with it after that. I'm like, y'all fuck with me, bro. What? Uh, <laughs> so what was your like? What was your experience when you did that first song? Was you showing everybody, or was you like, I need to do, I need to go back in there, like? Shit, I showed damn near everybody I ever met. I walked down the street and showed <laughs> a motherfucker, but I definitely want to get right back into it ASAP. But same shit though. Still a little brother rolled it. Like you got an easy way into it, bro. Plus back then, my nigga, I ain't know there's a certain thing called studio time. I thought that shit, we was in there all day. So they're like, nah, bro, we paid for our shit, you feel me? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just wanted to get right back into it after that. Yeah. For sure. So how did that lead into you, like, transitioning into becoming... How did you even get your name, right? Did you have a name at that time when you was on that first song? What did you go by? My first ever rap name was probably, like, I think it was either Lil K or Young K. All right. Shit was trash. <laughs> Start out with the Lil, yeah. everybody do that. I went through mad rap names. I got to Oz because that's my childhood name, like... I don't know where it even came from. Like since I was born, since everybody been calling me that shit everywhere, aunts, aunts. So that's why I ended up going with because it's the most comfortable to me and people that really, really know me. You know what I mean? So that's how I got that name. But I went through at least thirty names, bro. It was all trash. Hey man, sometimes they just come to you the name yeah, that, yeah. and it sticks, and you like, all right, this this ain't moving. It's here to stay. Exactly, exactly. 
So what at what point in time did you become Oz and start putting out your own songs and transitioning from being a little bro to doing your own thing? Mm. I'll say I used to, uh, you know how your parents give you money for school and shit, for like lunch or whatever. I would stack up my money for lunch mm -hmm. and I ended up buying a mic and I got this little mixed craft shit or something. something so you was going program. hungry. Exactly. Hungry as hell. I was Sometimes hungry you gotta do what you gotta do. Exactly. I was hungry for what I really love. So I'm like, nigga, I don't care. Fuck them little chips or whatever I was about to get. Say that up for like two weeks. Got me a little mic and a little uh, situation. The crazy thing is, the first mic I recorded on was actually a fucking, what was it called? USB? It was a USB, but it was from the game. Guitar Hero. Yeah, guitar Hero mic. Man. That was the first <laughs> mic I ever recorded on. So I ain't even bought a full mic. I bought Guitar Hero and just used the mic from that. And yeah, that's how I pretty much got into that shit. And I just, once I figure out how to master shit myself and everything, I just, by the time I came back to my big bros with the music, I had at least 30, 40 songs done. Yeah, and that's funny that you touch on Guitar Hero because I feel like that introduced a lot of people to music yeah, when it first yeah. came out. Like, because it made it fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. But, uh, you, you say 30, 40 songs, that's that's crazy because we were just talking about consistency before before we hopped on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, explain your, your process of just, like, creating and going through a song because, you know, a lot of artists make, might punch in and they, they can do that if they got the auto-tune and a good engineer. Exactly. It works for them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the, a lot of those songs kind of fall off because they don't really got substance. Exactly. And, and I know for a fact you have a lot of substance I in your music. It. But at the same time, I feel like it's harder, or I know it's harder yeah. to have substance and be consistent, Facts. you know? So Facts. what is your process? Because like, for me, I'll write a fire ass hook, mm -hmm. fire ass verse, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm on to the next, I'm, I'm just like on to the next thing and I never commit or finish. And I know a lot of artists do that. Yeah, so, yeah. so what's your process like? I do that too. And you've been in the studio with me, so you know I write real fast. Like I write everything in like five minutes. But I get that way too, I gotta really, I have to really, really fuck with a song heavy before I could super duper commit to it. You know what I'm saying? I normally, uh, I got to hear this shit several times. If, it, if I put it in rotation after I record it, I know that's the one and I can work with that. But as far as the recording process, it comes from inspiration at the end of the day. And I might have days where I'm not recording nothing. I can't think of shit. But life gives you inspiration no matter what. If you live in a new life, if you do the same shit over and over again, you're going to get the same result. You're going to make the same song because you live in the same life. But... I try to do some different shit. The more different shit I do, the more I got different ideas for, for songs and whatnot. And, of course, the homies, we have collaborative effects and shit. So that shit always helps me out, too. Some but new energy. Exactly. Having that, it's all about energy at the end of the day. Energy for real. For sure. So that's another thing, like you were just saying. like To commit to a song, I got to feel the energy of that song, too. Like You got to you feel it when it's the one, bro. You feel it when it's a, when it's a heater, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you you just mentioned that you know you gotta live and you gotta do things. Yeah. What do you like to do when you're not an artist? When you're not focusing on rapping, working, what do you like to do? Man, I like to do mad shit, bro. I like to obviously chill with the homies, go out, uh, I smoke weed and shit. Of course, games. You know what I'm saying? I got. The, I see you got the PS5. The you gotta right let them know, man. That niggas ain't doing that yet, bro. <laughs> but yeah, I got that mad shit, bro. Um, drive. I like to drive. Just listen to shit. What you listening to right now? Mm. I don't want to be that guy, you know what I'm saying? But I really am just listening to my shit right now and the homie shit right Fuck now. Fuck it. You feel me? Fuck it. I don't want to be too influenced by what's going on. I got to stay me. So I try to listen to me as much as possible. But aside from me, I do listen to a lot of niggas in the area for sure. Like, I fuck with the whole wave we got going on. I listen to you, nigga. I Appreciate listen to a bunch of people in the area. But Now, my question to you is this. A lot of people say that this area uh, is like holding talent and artists back from kind of making it yeah. to where they need to be do you think how do you feel about that do you think that's true i think it's true to a certain degree because on one end it's like it is the crab in the barrel effect out here a lot of times because everybody wants to be the first one to do it you know what i'm saying everybody want to be the first one so they shut other niggas down well I don't, he can't do this and he can't do that i'm not that type of nigga i don't give a fuck who the first one to do it is i don't care who it is to open the door as long as you leave that motherfucker open for me when i'm coming through you know what i'm saying if i'm the first one to do it I'm gonna leave that bitch open. That's how I feel. So, but it, it is definitely, definitely some tension like that. Everybody be disrespecting each other and all that type of shit. But if we all fuck with each other together, like on some Atlanta type of shit, we'll be out of here easily, bro. But that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. It's like it's kind of like they want you to be the 
fin final product and finished product, and they don't want to support you when you come they up. They don't. You know, and 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 it happens. So I mean, I don't know. I, it's a tough question because at the end of the day, people could say you got the internet, right? The mm -hmm. internet is so vast and it's so big, so you really got no excuses. But at the same time, your environment plays a big part in exactly. in, in your growth as an artist. Maybe like you feel about everybody wanting to be a rapper. You think that's a good thing? You think that's a bad thing? I think it's a good thing for sure like anybody that wants to you know use their their mindset and everybody got a story to tell like we were just talking about this off the camera everybody had a story to tell i think everybody should get into music or, or arts in general everything in life is art so people got to create if i couldn't create i'd be insane so i get i feel like more people should do it but if you take it for real you know what i'm saying don't do that shit just to play with it because it's like there's so many people that really need that opportunity mm -hmm. so the more spaced up it is it's harder to see who really is really about what they saying you know what i'm saying i really want to get into that shit so i do like people doing it but you gotta take it serious a hundred percent because it's like you know you got a lot of people that just drop a song and they think just because they threw some auto tune on that joint and, and they got some hard beats that is going to take off and they get mad that's exactly. not that's not really the case man it's not but, realistic. but at the end of the day i like how what you said that everybody should make art i agree yeah. because it's like you can either be the consumer or the producer, exactly. you know? And I feel like it's dope to be on both sides, I like right? Saying, I like being both. I like hearing that shit that niggas make. I like making shit for people to hear. It's like, it's best of both worlds, bro. Exactly. So when you're making your songs, I know you're making your songs for yourself, of course. Yeah. But who who is that the target audience? Or I know that's kind of like a, like a kind of like a corny question, mm -hmm. but like, who are you thinking of or who are you speaking to in your music? Well, like you said, I normally do make it for me because I know that myself, I know I'm a taste maker, bro. I know I know what's up. I know what's good in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? My humble opinion. So I do normally make it for me, but I want people that I want people to resonate with what was going on. So I make it for people that that's going through the struggle or have been through what I'm going through, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be make relatable music. Like I know what inspired me a lot to make real music, quote unquote real shit, is I know I used to see so many tweets back in the day, like niggas mentioned it, niggas like Kid Cuddy, like bro. I was about to commit suicide, but then I heard this song and saved my life and shit like that. Like, and I'm not saying I'm to that degree of helping people like that, but that's what I want to be. I want to be the voice for the people that feel like they're alone, you know what I'm saying? And what I do, so either, whether it's to turn you up and make some turn up music that's going to have you hype, or some real shit that's going to be introspective and make you think about it. But just like-minded individuals like that, I just want to help everybody out for real. That's funny, because what you say, what you want to be, because it's like, as an artist, you know the direction you want to take a song, yeah. but sometimes when that beat comes on and you find a flow, it go in a whole yeah. different way, right? Hell yeah. And you just got to ride with this shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, though, because it's like we all want to be a specific artist, yeah. but at the end of the day, we are who we are. Exactly. Because I, I think, like, a lot of people kind of try to put a box on their skills and try to kind of focus it in a specific way exactly. and I think they kind of hurt themselves like yeah. as an artist you shouldn't be saying nah I'm not gonna say that because of so and so mm -hmm. say that shit for real <laughs> let that shit go you can't, you can't hide the truth bro you yeah hide the truth you try the Wawa burger hell yeah how you feel about I that shit? that shit that shit was hella good I ain't gonna count I thought how everybody was talking about it I seen you first actually you the first person I saw talk about that shit you seen it was good that shit's hard I'm like oh no bro I'm gonna check that shit out Check that shit out there that with the fries. The fries taste like the goddamn um, the Taco Bell drones. I need. I ain't even try the Taco Bell drones. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Them shits, them shits are right. They all right. The burger was fire. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't gotta get the fries. The burger get the job done. The burger get the job done. I just had one yesterday actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Only reason I ask is that's like some Jersey shit. You know what yeah, I mean? Man. Like you never know who's watching. Like yeah, we gonna post this locally. Yeah. But at the end of the day, man, we looking at the world. We talking to the world right now. For real. So what would you say to like a younger kid or a younger artist or somebody who was like you, who was that that young kid coming up who really wants to do this or is really thinking about it? What message would you say to them? Cause it's 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 a journey being it an is. artist. It is. That's what I, I, was, I was, to piggyback off what you just said, I would say it is a journey. You got to understand that shit does not happen overnight. Like, I remember when I was young and I first got into it, I had so much music that I felt was better than a lot of niggas in the industry and whatnot. But I didn't understand, uh, it's not an overnight shit. You see people, you, see, you might see an artist pop up overnight as a kid and you're like, this nigga just came out of nowhere, but you don't know the groundwork he put in. Yeah. You don't know all the money he spent for promotion, production, features, and all that type of shit. And to be consistent and tell your truth. Don't let nobody, like you said before. And the chances he had to take to meet certain exactly. people, like. You, you had to fly here. You 
sometimes you might be on your last twenty dollars, but you got to spend that ten to go over here to meet this person. Like, mm -hmm. take a risk, but take a calculated risk, and just you know what I'm saying. Keep doing it as long as you're in love with it. If you feel like it's becoming a hassle, sometimes you might need to break away from that shit. But I do know sometimes, you know, they say pressure make diamonds. So I made some of my best songs in the worst mo like moments and feelings of my life. Like recently I lost my brother last year. I made a song that day. That shit was hard as hell, but the song ended up being a masterpiece, an amazing song. And you know what I'm saying? A good name it, What's the name of the song? It's called Never Understand. I ain't released it yet, but okay. my future project's about to come out soon. It's going to be on there for sure. Okay. Hell yeah. So I'll just say that. Stay consistent, work hard, and keep being in love with what you do. That's crazy, man, because I know me for a fact when I'm going through shit, it's the hardest to put your feelings yeah. into a song. Like, I think it's way easier to look back on that shit and talk about it. Hell but yeah. to go through that shit that day mm -hmm. and, and write that, that takes that takes a lot of strength. Yeah, yeah. That takes that takes like a giant a giant's amount of strength. Yeah, yeah I was about to, I was down there crying in the booth on that shit. Yeah, because people can't people people ain't as strong as you think they are, man. Yeah. When it comes to emotions, like yeah, for sure, you can't yeah. run from that. You can't. And but I but I do like doing songs in the heat of the moment when I'm going through something, whether I ain't in a relationship or not. But if you going through a breakup, I would like to record immediately after that. Or, for example, like I just told my brother passing because it's just a certain passion that you're never going to get back. Like You're right. Whether you write it a different day, like I could write that verse for that song and record it the next day, but I would never sound the same as if I would have did it that day because it's just some, it's something about that right moment. now, you know you're what I'm right. saying? So I, I like to capitalize on the moment. I you're right. Have some, I would, if it was up to me, I'd have a fucking studio with me everywhere I go because you never know when you go through some shit. You know what I'm saying? That would be hard. You'd be like, all right, I know exactly what I'm about to say right exactly. the fuck now. <laughs> No cap, bro. <laughs> That's funny as hell. So I see you just drop your whole. Uh, so you drop like an EP. What, yeah. what would you What would you call that? Is it not an EP? What would you call it? I wouldn't necessarily call it an EP. It's kind of like I was really only going to drop the Goat song, but I had another song that went that went along with it called Rafters. That's like a, it had a whole NBA type of th type of vibe. Like you see the cover, it's me over Kobe Bryant. It's called the MVP joint. MVP pack. Yeah, MVP yeah, yeah. pack. Yeah, but. I guess you could kind of consider the EP. It ain't long enough to really be one. Yeah. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? A little, little pack. I like it though. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I feel like it's like, if you want to drop one song, why don't you just drop a little pack with it? Exactly. You know what I mean? Especially it's, a song that they already heard. And I feel like that's like a modern thing because it's like a lot of artists drop mixtapes and sometimes they procrastinate trying to drop this whole mixtape. They yeah. don't drop shit. Exactly. Drop some packs. Drop a pack. Exactly. Drop a pack a month or we be straight. You got to. You know what I mean? Real shit. For niggas like us, like people that's trying to rise up, you got to understand our our margin for not dropping our era is this fucking small, bro, because niggas ain't looking for our shit as much as we think they are. Yeah. So I remember... In high school, I had a song called Tommy Trill Figure. That shit got like 150,000 views. I remember like that, that joint. Yeah, I remember that joint. Right? But the problem was, niggas wasn't consistent with that. Yeah. So every week, you ain't dropping niggas. Be forgetting more. Next mm -hmm. week, they don't want to hear it more. And it's time for progress. And there's so many new artists. Exactly. And on top of that, you don't be doing the bullshit to get views. Yeah, like how a lot of other exactly. artists. Exactly. You so know you what I mean? It. So if you ain't going to do the fuck shit to get the views, exactly. you got to drop a lot, my nigga. And it got to be good content, bro. And that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, and, and I see not only did you drop the pack, but you also drop you dropping videos. Yeah. You just you really working right now. Yeah, I'm as is is it it I can't open my phone and not see you, you know what exactly. I'm saying? And that's how it should be. Facts, bro. But but my question to you is this though. What how would you like if you were to look back at twenty twenty one, right? Mm -hmm. How would you define a successful year for you in your career at this mm -hmm. point? Cause, That's a great question. Because I'm going to just explain to you where you at right now. So you are up and coming artist, right? You got people who support you, mm -hmm. but you don't have a huge fan base, exactly. but you can get there yeah. because you have the quality and the content. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's so many nice niggas out there. Facts. What the fuck are you going to do? Facts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's facts. <laughs> I'm going to say this though. In my humble opinion. Yeah. And this ain't even just for local or anything like that. Like, I don't really think... There's too many motherfuckers that I'm bugging at you like it's funny like oh you want to be a rapper you know what I'm saying oh, everybody want to be a rapper it's like ours or whatever is fucking with me period so you honestly but I'm not even trying to cut you off you but you have a lot of songs that when I listen to I'm I'm rocking to them shits yeah. you're a great artist I appreciate and you are too bro thank I you I appreciate it and you inspire me when we work together all the time I appreciate you, you, you know you got to clap sure, up on that sure. man but 
Um, what was the question again? My bad. Nah, just how would you define a successful year for you? Because like oh, you've been consistent dropping the videos, dropping packs, mm -hmm. but you got a long way to go, man. Hundred yeah, percent. A successful, a successful year for me would be. Ironically, it's more about me than the results. You feel me? Because I know people are going. If they hear what I'm dropping or what I'm saying, it's no way. If you fuck with this rap music, whatever the case may be, you're not gonna rock with it. So for me, being successful, it had to be internally. I gotta be on my shit consistent. I gotta drop every week or something like that, like I want to, and actually give them the the content that they've been waiting for for all this time. Cause it's so amazing to me. I see people that like my music. And they're like, bro, you wanted to, you a goat, all that type of shit based on what I dropped. And I ain't dropped nothing that I really, really fuck with yet. Like, all my super duper classic songs and whatnot, I'm holding them for a proper time. So, for a good year for me, it would be dropping a bunch of projects. Followers, they're going to go up either way. You know what I'm saying? Um, that, videos. The, the followers, man, as long as you got people who really rock with your exactly. music and fuck with your music, they'll share your shit. Exactly. I don't, want, I don't even care about followers. I don't care about quote unquote fans. I'm a family, a fan, a, a fan base of like people that I really fuck with, and I want to be able to reach out to them and reach back to me. All of that shit. So a successful year for me would be, like I said, staying, staying um, consistent, getting actual projects out that I really fuck with, uh, branching out too, rather just not even just with music. Like I got other shit I want to do. I like talking motivational videos and even skits and some funny shit like that, and making sure my team is at the best that they could be. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm not saying I'm the leader of my squad. But we all are individual leaders, so if they can watch what I'm doing and see, oh, uh, Anz is doing what he do, we all going to be doing what we're supposed to do and dropping more. So just staying consistent, man. That's really that's really what it is. Mm-hmm. So, but I want to talk about your team, and I want to get to that, but I just want to touch on this. It seems like you kind of are a different artist now. And I, I won't say you're a different artist, but it seems like it's your second run. Yeah. I, I feel like, yeah, you, yeah. you know, I, I, you see a lot of artists, it seemed like you was more of a younger artist. Now it seems like you a young man yeah. and you really on your shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like what flicked the switch and just kind of made you like morph into what you are now, you know? And, and I, I know people get older and stuff like that, but it seems like you just more serious right now. Yeah. Well, made me flip the switch a couple things, bro. Cause like, before we go in there, like, look at where we at right now. Look at what you got, like, yeah, hell yeah. you official, you know what I'm saying? Facts, facts. What made me really flip the switch, well, one, what started the switch, I say, was um when I left home, you know, discomfort. You gotta be uncomfortable to grow. If you're in the same situation, you're not really going, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get the same result. So when I left home and went alone to Vegas and lived out there, that really forced you to be a man. So that's really when I started to turn up a little bit more. But then coming back, like I said, I lost my brother while I was out there. And he's a nigga that believed in me so much. Wanted to put so much money in my pocket to work this and that and all of the type of things. But I didn't really, I wasn't ready. Like, I knew I'd been that nigga forever, bro. Since I was 12, 13, 14 People been coming up to you my know. mom. Everybody you know. Telling, everybody been telling me and telling my people, bro, he's really the one. He really, I'm saying? So I've been new, but that's additional pressure, I guess, that I wasn't ready for. But now it's like, life is too short. I don't want to say life is short. Life is long. But I can't waste no more time, bro. Like, today is not, tomorrow's not promised. So I got to live every day and every moment like that. So that's why I'm super trying to go hard with buying the equipment or shooting videos or flying out here for this. Take it for real, because it's like, Somebody told me this one time, it's like, if you really know what you want to do, but you never put 100% into it, you never know. Like, we be we be depressed or, like, upset off of miniature failure. I dropped this song, ain't get that many views. I, but we never really go full force into it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that's why I'm thinking, like... You drop the song and it flop, fuck it, delete exactly. it. Drop a harder one. Exactly, but go full <laughs> force into that shit. Because niggas be like, maybe rap ain't for me, but never try everything. For me... For me to realize I'm a it's a failure for me to walk away, I'ma try every fucking thing I can, whether it's put all my money into this, put all my money into this, but I gotta try every single thing I can do before I hang it up and say, alright, it wasn't meant for me. Mm -hmm. A lot of niggas will let a thing happen to them and be like, alright, fuck that, fuck rap, it ain't for me. Nah, I gotta try every single thing I can do, go through every obstacle, and if I fail at the end and it wasn't meant, it wasn't meant, but at least I know I checked everything I could have possibly did on the way, you know what I'm saying? So that's how that's the mentality I'm in right now, I'm trying to go harder with that. Like I'm trying everything I can do, bro. Hundred percent. So along the side, you know, you keep saying we. It's definitely not you yeah. because you got people who really believe in you, like yeah. you said, and really support you. No, yes, they're not here physically, but they here. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. So 
you want to touch on them or just talk about what y'all got going on, how y'all met each other, how y'all came together, you know? Hell yeah, so New Wave, man, that's the obviously the click if y'all niggas don't know, now y'all know. You know what I'm saying? How we got together, I got my big brother, his name is Fats, but his rap name is 13th Floor. He really the originator of all of that shit, for real. He put us all together. But in high school, we had a group called Stay Infamous that I put together of me, Hazi, uh, Zach, you know what I'm saying? All niggas like that. That was all with everybody else. Sorry, my nigga, but. <laughs> yeah, I know, bro. Zay, Kenny, all of y'all, but I don't want to touch y'all with a new way of shit. But, uh, we had a click like that, and we started doing music like that. Like, I'm a nigga, I'm like a, I want to say I'm like a visionary type of nigga. Like, I see things in people that they might not see them at the time. Like, a lot of my niggas didn't even do music before I fucked with them, but I seen it. I'm like, bro, you got something that you got to say, bro. Come to my career, let's work on some music. And then niggas turned up being amazing artists. So that's really where that came from. And we all got together, you know what I'm saying? And then, like I said, to us back on my brother, I showed him what's going on. He told us, about, he's like, New Wave should be the name. And I know that's like a term now, New Wave. But back in the day, when nah, y'all been on that, that shit. Niggas been on that shit, you know what I'm saying? But either way, shout out to the game. We got a lot of shit working on. We got a, a group tape about to come out, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Zach, shout out to Ha, shout out to Zay, Kenny, shout out to the Skis, shout out to Av, Quan. Anybody I miss, I apologize. Oh, Dill, you know what I'm saying? I was so about I, to oh, say. I can't forget my nigga Dill, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everybody, but the wave is like, it ain't just us. That's why I can easily forget some names sometimes because it's like, anybody who fucks with the vision or wants to get down with that type of environment, I'm with it. I don't, I, the wave could be a million niggas. New wave could be a million people legitimately, you know what I'm saying? It's just about people that's really chasing their dreams and like, have something to bring to the table as far as making everything better, you know what I'm saying? Whether you, you fuck with technology, you fuck with, uh, video games, music, we just trying to take over every type of plateau. So that's really what the wave resonates as, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you got any predictions for 2021? I know 2020, they, they call it the year of the dead rapper. So many artists passed away, yeah. you know, RIP to a lot of them. And there's so many, we don't even really got to drop names. But that was really the vibe that was going on. What you think is going to be just the atmosphere really in hip hop 2021? What you, what you see? From what I'm starting to see right now, I mean, I'm biased. I'm going to say it's going to be the year of the wave. You already know that. <laughs> aside from that, you know what I'm saying? What I'm starting to see is content is really becoming, like, niggas can't just say bullshit no more. That's what I'm starting to see with music. Like, as time is progressing, the mumble rap, whatever the case may be, which I don't even want to call it mumble rap, because I like a lot of artists that they put in that category. But that type of shit is starting to fall back a little more. People are really starting to listen to what you're saying more, because we can't do nothing but listen. We can't come see you at a show. You know what I'm saying? We can't do all of that shit that blocks out what you're saying. So people is actually paying attention more and putting more wisdom and everything into their bars. So I think 2021 is going to be like, uh, the, you know how niggas be saying in like the 90s, that was the golden era, that type of shit. Mm -hmm. I think this is about to be the start of the golden era this year. I ain't going to cap the it, new golden era. It's possible, bro. I really tough. Think that, bro. I think we're going to lead the movement. You heard it here first, y'all. Facts. Bro, shit. We're going to lead the movement, bro. All right, bro. We got eyes in the building. I appreciate you for bringing me through, man. Sure, you bro. got any any last shout outs you want to do? Any projects? Anything you got coming out, man? Man, shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to the six, the whole six oh nine. You already know we going up. I got definitely some projects coming out. I got a little EP, a real shit coming out, bro. Literally, I'm finna drop content every week, whether it's a song a week, whether it's a video a week, whatever the case may be. I'm finna drop every week. So stay on the lookout. Follow me at six oh nine eyes on Instagram. I'm saying Oz Pacino on Twitter. You feel me? And that's how we rock it. All right, y'all.